I started these tutorials with the question, what is philosophy? Now remember, we could define what an academic discipline is either by referring to its specific object, in contrast with the, the objects of other academic disciplines, or by referring to its specific method. And this is what we'll do now. We already talked about the object of philosophy. Now let's check out what its specific method is. And specific, that means in contrast with the method of science. Contrast, question mark. In a sense, of course, philosophy is a branch of science. It's a scientific discipline. It's a part of science in the broad sense. Broad sense. However, we contrast it with, let's say, science in the strict sense. And then we think, for instance, about the natural sciences. So there is a difference between philosophy and the sciences in the strict sense, and that is also a, different, a difference in method. We already talked a little bit about the method of the scientist when we talked about philosophy of science. And indeed, what I'll be doing now is a little bit more of philosophy of science. Philosophy of science in the broad sense, then, because we're also, talk about, also talking about the method of philosophy. So our scientist, what is his method to try to understand reality, to try to understand such things as people or tables? So we said that he observes, and observation, that is the empirical element in science, typically for scientists is that their empirical observation is experimental. It's not just daily observation, it's quite sophisticated. They go to the lab, they do, they, they really actively intervene in reality. They do stuff with things then to see what happens. So they actively, we could say that they observe in an active way. But they don't only observe afterwards when they have seen what they want to see. They use their big brains to make all kinds of fancy mathematical models to try to describe what they have observed. It's not always that observation comes first and that mathematical modeling comes afterwards, of course. Very often the model comes first and the empirics come later. Anyway, science is a combination on the, of these two and that makes it science. And in philosophy you see a very different thing. It's very different. Sometimes philosophers will also base their ideas on observations, but it will not be the meticulous, disciplined kind of observation of the scientist and there will be no experiments, there will be no stuff in the lab. So perhaps philosophers will base some ideas on daily observation. It's quite common that you go to philosophy conferences and that uh, some researcher will um, refer to his, his experience on the bus towards the conference or on the plane. So it's, it's very common observations they give not systematically at all, just from daily life. Now they don't only use their eyes and sometimes they even completely forget to refer to any observation whatsoever, but typically philosophers use their brains. And they don't use their brains to make complicated mathematical models like the scientists do, but they construct often quite clever verbal arguments. Their arguments are verbal. So argumentation is also an intellectual activity. It's also the brain that generates arguments, if you want. But typically for philosophers, they are of a verbal kind and not of a mathematical kind. It's words. It's blah, blah, blah. It's what I'm giving you right now. This is philosophy. It's words. Open a philosophy book, open a science book, and the one thing that you'll notice is that the one is full of words and the other is full of numbers, full of figures, full of graphs. So that's the typical method of the philosopher. Now, philosophers have a very good, to say it in a little bit of a negative way, excuse to have this specific method of verbal argumentation. And that is that 
their object is in a sense different from the object of the scientist and I already argued that so the scientist remember he tries to describe how reality works how things move to describe the dynamics well they'll also try to explain but I, I will not go into that it's really about about the how of movements perhaps about the why of movements but then the why will often just refer to some mathematical um, uh, models rather than to a deeper essence or something but the philosopher wants to talk about normative aspects of reality remember he wants to prescribe what people should do and it's about metaphysical aspects of reality about the deeper essence of things of what it means to be human what it means to be a table so since the object is since the object is a little bit different therefore the method can be a little bit different or so philosophers argue now not everybody agrees with that you have first of all you have philosophers who agree who disagree that there is such a thing as a different object for philosophers that there are such things as normative aspects of reality or metaphysical aspects I mean, we should just be silent about that there's just reality there's just nature and then of course the scientific view becomes the most interesting one but even if you do believe that there is that there are normative aspects to reality or even metaphysical you might still argue well I mean this kind of way of thinking is still better than this kind of way of thinking I mean why would why would verbal ar verbal arguments be good in trying to grasp some normative and, and metaphysical aspects of reality I mean let's try to do math and let's base base our ideas on, on, on decent empirical data and this is how we'll progress this is an option you can take and this is what is called naturalism naturalism oops we I think it's not, not on the screen naturalism uh, <laughs> again I guess you you understand where I'm heading at right so nature is the only thing which exists and therefore the method of the natural scientist is the method which we want to use in understanding anything about reality okay now I'm gonna conclude with a little bit of a strange observation I am a philosopher and what I've been doing now is philosophizing about the method of the philosopher versus the method of the scientist so I have I am a philosopher philosophizing about the method of a philosopher right so in a sense I'm a philosopher of science I'm doing philosophy of science here I'm thinking about science in the broad sense and our philosopher is also a scientist but now suppose that our philosopher is a, is a philosopher of science he's a philosopher of science okay that is a bit strange that means that the object of my philosophizing right now resembles me he's like me what he does is also thinking about science so his reality about which he's what uh, what he's thinking about is it's a scientist so this guy let's say he's a, he's a scientist and he's trying to think about st such stuff as tables and people so you see this image is the same as this big image here he's a philosopher of science he's thinking about science this is a scientist this is the object of science and now I am a philosopher of science myself behind the screen you can see me I, I'm pointing at myself right now isn't that a strange situation that I as a philosopher of science think about philosophy of science that means that philosophy that my discipline is its own object 
that is strange. So it's a kind of Russian doll kind of situation, right? We have philosophers of science within philosophers of science, etc. This is a little bit of a philosophical remark, but I'm I'm going somewhere. Because you could wonder, you could wonder whether the philosophical method is the right way to think about the proper method for the philosopher. The philosopher of science, his method was verbal argumentation, but what I am doing right now is also verbally arguing about this. So I'm saying, yes, the philosopher of science is justified in, in, in having a different, in, in a different method, a method different from that of the, of the real scientist. You know, the, the object is a little bit different. He's talking about normative stuff, normative stuff, metaphysical stuff. But that means that I am using a method, a philosophical method, and which I kind of assume, presuppose, while I am actually still trying to show that is that is the right method. Okay, and I'll leave you with that thought.